So ZBrush is now firmly embedded in the mobile sculpting world. It's been out now for a few weeks and I wanted to just do a few more videos of the tools that are available to us using the subscription based um, ZBrush, which I'm well aware of a lot of my audience don't support that and don't like that idea of a subscription. But there are tools in there that I think you should be aware of that certainly they come from industry, they're in the main ZBrush in the most case. So let's take a look at some of those and we'll start with this one, which is one of my favorites, which is Cloth Dynamics. Okay, so we're gonna do this in three parts. So we're gonna go make something very quickly. So we're gonna make a table, which will be a cylinder. We're gonna make a tablecloth, which will be a plane. Then we're gonna do a dynamic. Um, we're gonna drop the tablecloth dynamically onto the table. And then we're gonna use cloth brushes to affect that, to teach you those different parts. So first thing we need is a table and there we go, done. That is all we need. This is called a collision object. This is gonna catch the tablecloth and we're gonna hide it. We'll never see it again. If you want to round it off or do anything else, you can go in here and you could subdivide it or um, w w whatever you decide to do. But we actually don't care because we're gonna hide it at some point. So what we do need though, is we need, a, uh, we need to add in a uh, tablecloth. So we come up here we go add, plane and we've got a, we've now got a plane in the scene even if you can't see it so i'm on the plane and i'll just use the gizmo to bring it up bring it all the way up here now weirdly you can't see that because i'm looking at the back of it and the way you solve that in um, zbrush is you just come down here to display settings display properties should I say and hit double so that's now a double sided polygon that's a good one to remember if you're going to start learning this stuff it's the same in other programs as backface culling on and off or hidden backfaces that kind of thing so it's under display properties in ZBrush we've now got a tablecloth so we'll roll it forward I don't care at all about um, you know doing it by holding shift and rotating it accurately because we want it a little bit erratic and by that what i mean is i want it to be a little bit deformed before i start moving it so i could for example take the move brush and i could just pull up the middle a little bit like that and um, i could make that even bigger by holding down this little button here i love this little icon by the way you can move it around wherever it suits this is the equivalent of your keyboard shortcuts um, um, on the desktop version so if we just make the brush bigger and there you go it's just already just pulled it up and given it some randomness before we even start now the next stage this is going to be low resolution we're going to stay with low resolution because it's got to calculate all of this in real time so what we're going to do is we're going to make this um, we're, going to, we're going to basically make a, coll a collision object so to do that you have to tell it um, that you want dynamics on. So if we come up to the top up here and basically come, we, we don't want the tool panel anymore. So if we close everything down to the base palette and then down here, you've got quite a few of the palettes. These in ZBrush are in the top row. So these are the palettes that you see um, hit, you know, with, with all of the individual sets of tools in them. The one that we're using all the time is this one tool, but we don't want to use that now. We want to come back up here and go to dynamics. And with dynamics on, we need to say I'd like collision objects. So we just put halfway down, you just put collision object on. And basically now we've got a collision object. So if it's not selected, it's, it's a collision object. Just make sure that stays on. I accidentally tapped it back off then. So with that on, now we can play with the settings a little bit. Now I'm going, I'm going to do some things that will make it run a bit slower so that you can see it happening. So we'll work through the top. So simulation iterations are at 100. Leave that. If your machine's less, then lower it. If your machine's more capable, higher it. And the strength we'll leave and the firmness for now we'll leave that. Play with those once you understand the basics. Firmness would be the cloth would be more like canvas than it would be like silk, for example. Um, and if you go to programs like Blender and Cinema 4D and Maya with, with you know, with, with, with their um, different ways of doing it, you can play with cloth a lot more than this. Collision options in here, we, we don't need to do anything on there. 
So you do, you, you can do this, which is self-collision. So that means if a piece of cloth folds over itself, it would know that it's there. So you could increase the self-collision and you do want floor collision because this, this green floor, which is here, is on and it knows it's a floor. We do want that. So we want gravity options. This is where I'm going to slow things down for you a little bit. And I've set gravity to 2.83. I did it just before the video. Normally it's set to 10, which gives you like real world gravity. Um, I did 24 then, which makes it a bit different. So bring it down. Uh, something like two or three is, is, is usually quite good. Um, so that's like a third of Earth's gravity, really. Um, so uh, I've just come off it. So let's just go back onto it. So now we, we, th there's a couple of other things you could try. Now, I'm not going to do it because this is quite, you know, I'm just showing you the basics. You could put liquefy on and liquefy means that you're dropping the cloth into like a vat of liquid. And that gives you some superb options for flowing garments and, you know, things like that. But your stuff will flow slowly. So don't put that on until you're ready for that. Um, collision volume we've already said was on resolution for us and inflate we don't want to play with any of them at the moment inflate would mean it would balloon out as it as the simulation is running and if you're ready now remember this is low resolution and let's just run simulation and see what happens so i've just popped the wireframe off to make it look better for you and we'll just run it again and hit run simulation. And the difference now is, is it's seeing it, at, obviously it's seeing it as a volume and it's giving you those folds. Now, I want you to notice this here, it's calculating, it's running in real time over and over again. So you can't do anything while it's running, so you have to stop it running. And then it's basically a live object again, we can do something with it once that's stopped. So let's just hide that cylinder now, we don't need it. But look how janky that cloth is. It looks good if you unfocus your eyes, which isn't very helpful. So there's two things we could do. We could A, uh, divide it like so, or I'll undo that. And you could do something that's a little bit different, which is if you use dynamic, dynamic subdivision and you pop that on, basically that does whatever this number below it so when it says subdivision two that's doing it um two times if you do three it's doing it three times so that's timesing the polygons by four three times over so if it starts off at 10 it would be 40 then it would be um four fours <laughs> so it's be 160 and then it'd be whatever 160 times four is so you mathematicians can work that out so basically that's that's the essence of sub subdivision but it's doing it with a live option. It's like a tag rather than it being subdivided then subdivided then subdivided. And that means basically we can go back up to dynamic subdiv and turn that on and off at any point. I like this option in ZBrush to make a quick dynamic subdivision. It reminds me of the old days of Lightwave and in, in, um, in Maya, it's just a single click to see it smoothed. So what we need to do now is we can put that on. So move, put dynamic subdivision on. And we want to have a look at it as a, I mean, it is a tablecloth now, so it's working as a tablecloth and we can do a number of things with it. So let's just shut these panels down. Okay, so it's just geometry now and it's got this dynamic subdivision on it. So let's just use, say, for example, the move tool and we'll bring the, the brush down a little bit. And now, as you can see, you can just pull the cloth around. Now, bear in mind, it's not reacting to that table at the moment. But what we might, might want to do is use different brushes to get some really, really cool effects. So if you come to brushes on this side and come down the side and look for cloth, which I think it was already on cloth, you have a raft of different tools you can use here. And I really do like these. So let's just see what each one does and we'll undo it each time. So I'll start at the bottom. So cloth, um, wind, and I'll just I'll use that bigger brush that I've got and I'll just pull it and just see what happens. You can see there, it's moving through the cloth like wind. That's quite useful. We'll undo that one. Never really used that on, any, on anything commercial, um, but it obviously it's there as, as a, a good one. Cloth twister, bring that to the top and twist it. Uh, as you can see there, it's twisting through the cloth. This is cool. This is great if you're doing, you know, you've got some nice, uh, like a, a, a nice cloak on a, on a character and you want to really make that cloth do something special. So that one is quite useful. 
We'll have a look at cloth slide. You will like this one, I think. So we can just slide that around and it pulls it into areas. This is great when you've got hanging stuff. As you can see there, this is, this is giving us really good dynamic folds. Um, and depending on the size of your brush, you can play with things like your focal shift and your size of your brush. If you go really small, you're gonna get localized you know, sometimes little happy accidents, but it doesn't really help you. It needs to be quite large brushes. And the focal shift, I generally keep that quite high. Um, and there you see, it's a bit more fluid. A um, bit too big probably there for that one. So this is not something you're gonna learn in one session of using ZBrush. You, you're gonna have to play with these until you, you know, you get a feel for what you want. This isn't marvelous design. It's not gonna stitch your clothes together and then dynamically, you know, affect them. You know, it's, it, it, it's a, just a way to get cool geometry clothing. Here's another one. You can see I'm pulling it around. That's a bit like the move tool, but it's got some dynamism in it. So that one's useful. Let's cloth pull. Let's try cloth pinch. See what happens when we pinch right through the cloth. So see how it's making a bit of a mess at the bottom there. Now you can smooth it so I can do that. And if we don't like it, we can hold smooth. And oops, that's mask. And we can just smooth it down if that was something you want to do or if you've messed it up a bit. So play with that one by all means cloth pinch not giving me too much there is it so if i go to the top see what happens maybe with the bigger brush not really giving me anything on the top but on the side maybe it's pinching it nicely but yeah again it's it's like pulling through it so i have used that one quite a bit on main z brush but doesn't seem to be doing anything significant on this one uh, cloth nudge, definitely use this one. So this is a great way for nudging cloth together. Um, it's good for when it's on the floor and you're nudging it around the floor. That one can be quite useful. Um, I just whip through a few more cloth. Move on, bother with cloth inflate. This could give us some dramatic effects. Yeah, there you go. So that's going to give us something. Uh, you, you might want to, let me come back with that one. You might want to use a smaller brush for this one. Um, something like that. So you can see there, it's again, it's quite a dramatic effect. So, it, you know, again, try it and learn on, you, you know, test models before, you, you know, you do, you know, you go crazy with it. This is cloth hook, pull it up in the middle and hook it up. Um, and look at this, if you can get some, again, if you've already done this on top of your warrior or on top of your, um, you know, the even skin, I've done dinosaurs, dinosaur necks with this exact, literally this exact technique and this exact brush. I'll try and show you one on screen if I can. Um, you can see how that would be really, really useful. A um, couple more cloth fold and whip through them cloth dimple with a bigger brush. There you go, that's a nice one, look at that. Makes a mess, so again, you would want to smooth that down um, and use a smaller brush probably. But yeah, that, that uh, can give you some nice effects. And then I'm just gonna go all the way back. We'll just do the last one, which is cloth ball. Not gonna do much for us on this one. I think cloth nudge and cloth twister are the ones that I probably you know get the most out of. They're certainly the most happy accidents. Um, you know, you, you, we, the, the, there are lots and lots of combinations of these brushes that will give you what you want. So it is a case of playing with it. And don't forget, you just have got the normal brush as well, just for the normal move tool as well. So if you want to start playing around with that, 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 that could come back and give you something. I've used this for ghosts. I've used it for hair, believe it or not, with a transparent. I've used it for creatures, as I said, skin, etc. So that gives you a 101 of... Um, just use basic low poly tools use the dynamics to just throw the cloth onto something that could be a creature it could be a helmet it could be a body you do whatever you want and then some brushes and and you know having to play with that so go and have a play with it if you've got the if you've got the subscription i am well aware that a lot of my followers don't want to do this but i'm obliged in my mind to show you what is out there beyond what we've got in the likes of nomad and forger and those other apps. So this is just expanding your awareness of what tools we've got in, in the wider software packages. So um, I, I'll, we're doing a video about the differences between Nomad and ZBrush, so watch out for that in the near future. 
Our goal is obviously to help people create in new and innovative ways and hopefully we're covering that with new tools like the ZBrush for iPad and Valence 3D app which is we're going to start doing videos for that soon. So please feel free to subscribe, follow along and get involved.